Recently, I did a video giving my thoughts on inflation and what I think is commonly misunderstood when it comes to inflation. But knowing and understanding inflation is one thing, but actually learning and understanding how to benefit from inflation is a completely different thing. Like I always try to say on this channel, when it comes to personal finance, I believe it's about, it's really key in having actionable steps. And that's really how you improve your financial situation. So understanding how you can benefit from inflation is really key in that. So if that interests you at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. And we're gonna be talking about inflation in two different parts. The first being how do different asset classes perform when it comes to inflation isn't gold a good investment is it a bad investment how do stocks perform and the second is going to be basically what are kind of key personal things you can do what are personal steps you can do to benefit from inflation and this doesn't necessarily re regard investing more so just personal things you can do such as negotiating a better salary the first point i want to start with is when it comes to asset classes and how they historically perform with regards to inflation just because something has historically happened doesn't mean it will always happen that way especially in this current situation there may be some key differences i'm going to talk about that make inflation kind of a little bit different the first being if you think about the u.s economy being one of the few economies right now that's basically for fully open with, for all intents and purposes that may mean that other countries have to rely on our manufacturing our production our services it, rather than being self-reliant it may seem a little bit odd to relate it this way but if you think about after a world war occurrence you basically have the demand for goods and services is a lot stronger greater than ever before right people are trying to rebuild their homes countries are trying to rebuild their you know buildings and everything like that rebuild their roads so the demand for goods and services is stronger than ever before pushing those prices up at the same time you have a limited supply of goods right because a lot of these countries don't have their manufacturing plants anymore they don't have the labor uh, available to basically Basically, you know cut down trees and provide that own lumber for themselves but the countries that didn't necessarily have that destruction or didn't have as much of an impact benefit a lot after these world wars because they basically are the only countries available to provide those goods and services so when it comes to kind of this current situation and inflation right now just kind of be keeping that in mind whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or whether this current situation really does relate to that you know that's kind of for you to decide i just want to provide the analysis and kind of give that perspective but at the end of the day it's kind of for you to decide how inflation will impact our overall economy whether or not that's going to actually be a good thing so when it comes to inflation any kind of fixed income asset doesn't necessarily fare too well when it comes to inflation and i'll throw up some charts in a second for those that you know this kind of concept may be a little bit too basic for you but i just want to make sure we're all on the same page about this you know if i have a fixed income asset and i'm getting a hundred dollars every single month but prices are starting to inflate, then that $100 isn't necessarily as, I don't have as much purchasing power anymore. So any kind of fixed income asset or anywhere that I'm basically getting a set fixed amount is not necessarily as great as something that's kind of like a growth stock or equity stock. That's gonna fare a lot greater and I'll go more in detail in a second. The type of assets that are gonna actually lose the most value when it comes to inflation are gonna be things like high dividend type stocks, which I know is kind of a buzzword right now, but they are, there is a downside to high dividend stocks which is that they don't fare too well when it comes to inflation. Things that will fare well are things like commodities usually tend to fare well or any kind of equity or growth type stock. Stocks that don't necessarily pay out a dividend because they're more focused on the growth of their company. Those are going to fare a lot better when it comes to inflation. Bonds are also something that don't necessarily fare too well when it comes to inflation because if you think about having $1,000 given out to somebody and I'm getting 2% return on that, that 2% isn't necessarily as great of a deal over time. There is kind of a high hybrid model known as treasury inflated or inflation protected securities or tips for short tips are a form of a fixed income security but it gets adjusted for inflation so whereas a regular fixed income security let's say i get paid a hundred dollars every single month regardless if inflation goes up or down tips actually get adjusted for inflation so if inflation starts to go up that hundred dollars actually starts to go up as well to like let's just say for example 110 dollars but like any hybrid it you know you get the benefit of having both worlds right it's a fixed income security but at the same time it also gets adjusted for inflation but it doesn't necessarily perform either way too well if you compare tips to traditional fixed income security during periods of low inflation those traditional fixed income securities will actually do better than say tips would but on the reverse end during periods of high inflation those traditional fixed income securities won't perform well versus a 
versus tips would perform pretty well during periods of inflation. But at the same time, what performs better than tips during periods of high inflation are things like I mentioned before, commodities, precious metals, stocks that focus on equity and growth versus dividends. Those are going to perform a lot better during periods of high inflation. But at the same time, those won't perform well during periods of low inflation. So that's where, you know, tips are is basically a hybrid model. It kind of performs well in both scenarios, periods of low inflation, periods of high inflation, but it doesn't necessarily get the biggest benefit in either scenario. Now, real estate is actually an interesting asset class when it comes to inflation, and how it performs, because it actually has both sides of it. So when you just think about the value of a home, it actually tends to appreciate either on par or on pace with inflation or a lot faster than inflation, which, you know, some people also talk about how that's a little bit of a sign of how home prices are a, a bubble, but that's a story for another time. But at the same time, if you think about a rental property, you also have that fixed income type idea as well in the form of rent payments. Typically, you're not charging a different rent every single different month. Most tenants aren't going to like that. So you typically either have a six month, 12 month lease, or you're trying to keep a tenant there for several years. So, you know, you're happy with that tenant. You've been charging them $1,000 every single month. You're going to continue to charge them $1,000 every month because you like that tenant, regardless of the fact that you could be charging a higher rent due to inflation. So in short, you're actually benefiting both ways when it comes to rental properties during periods of high inflation. It's due to the appreciation of your home value during periods of low inflation you're, or even a recession, you're benefiting from having that steady rent price that you're charging. Now, I want to explore this idea of inflation and asset prices a little bit more. And I like for people to draw their own conclusions, not tell people exactly what's going to happen, since ultimately no one can predict what will happen. But feel free to share your thoughts down below in the comments. I'd be curious to hear them. Here's a historic chart of inflation with regard to consumer prices. Like I mentioned in my last video, there can be different versions of inflation and how to measure it. But to keep it simple, we're using consumer prices here to gauge inflation. A couple things worth noting. 1980, one of the highest points of inflation. 2009, one of the lowest inflation rates. Here's a 30-year version of that same chart. The only thing worth noting here is the period between 1992 and 2001, as well as the period between 2002 and 2008. We have pretty stable rates of inflation, so prices are still going up, but the rate at which it's going up remains about the same. Now, here's a 30-year chart that has home prices as well as gold. And what I like to point out here is the period in the 1980s with one of the highest rates of inflation like we mentioned before it's interesting to note that medium home values didn't really dip or increase at all but gold did and i actually just want to pause for a moment and just say here when it comes to using historic data you can kind of use it to prove any point that you're trying to actually make so this is just kind of a this may be a one-off instance where inflation and medium home values didn't necessarily correlate as much so some people will basically just use that one instance to basically prove that inflation and medium home prices don't correlate at all but then you get people on the reverse end that will only use these other instances where inflation and medium home values did increase at the same rate and that that kind of proves that inflation and medium home values always increase at the same pace. So that's why I always think it's necessary to come to your own conclusions before actually making any kind of solid decisions on that information. Now back to the chart, we also want to note that in the 80s, gold dropped fairly quickly afterwards after that period of inflation, but then it remained pretty stable in value for a long time, not really going up or, or down. And in the 2000, that during the dot-com bust, gold still barely even moved. So we'll explore this whole idea of gold and precious metals as a safe haven in a future video. But it is interesting to note that this whole idea of precious metals, or especially gold in particular, being a safe haven has not always historically held true. It's kind of more of a recent phenomenon. But here's what I will say with regards to precious metals. Be careful. There's a lot of people out there that have a vested interest in precious metals. But if you talk to them, it's kind of interesting because they will basically say how gold has historically gone up during periods of uncertainty, during especially during recessions. But yet at the same time, they'll say why it's a good asset during periods of inflation at the same time. But you can't really have both points hold true. Otherwise, it's the ultimate asset. If it's doing great during periods of inflation, as well as periods of, you know, recessions and deflation, then why wouldn't everybody just dump their money into gold? So that's just kind of an interesting point. I just wanted to point out and no shade to people that invest in precious metals. Now, last thing I want people to kind of leave with when it comes to assets and how they historically perform with regards to inflation is to just keep it simple. Don't necessarily complicate it. Here's just kind of a couple of key concepts to keep in mind with regards to inflation and assets. Once again, the idea of fixed income, anything where I'm kind of getting a steady $100 or even a steady percent interest, if I'm getting a steady 2% interest, as inflation starts to increase, 
I'm actually performing less because that 2% doesn't necessarily have as much purchasing power. That $100 I was getting every single month in the form of annuity isn't necessarily as valuable. The other thing to keep in mind is that also applies in the form of debt. If I take out a $1,000 loan and I only have to pay 2% interest now, during periods of high inflation, that 2% actually ends up being worth less. It's less purchasing power. So I actually benefit from borrowing during periods of high inflation. Now, the same is true with companies. It's cheaper to borrow for them as well because they're going to be paying back with the same amount of dollars, but those dollars have less purchasing power. So cheaper to borrow. Those companies are going to buy assets, drive up the demand of those assets and drive up the prices of those assets. So very simple concepts. If you just kind of, you know, don't overcomplicate that idea. Cheaper to borrow, buying assets, assets prices go up. So now I want to cover what are steps and actions you can actually take to better position yourself and protect yourself from inflation. We're only going to cover three just so we don't overcomplicate it. Plus these three are basically going to give you, you know, 99% of the results in a way. The first being and the most important probably is to basically ask for a salary or hourly rate increase with regards to inflation. But a lot of people think about this the wrong way. So a lot of people like to think there's 2% national inflation rate. So I should ask for a 2% salary increase. But the reality is you have to think about how much inflation actually directly impacts you. So that 2% can actually be an average of a lot of different things that, you know, the overall economy is affected by. But let's say that food costs actually are inflated by only 1%, whereas childcare goods and services are inflated by 10%. If you have a lot of dependents, let's say you have three or four children, obviously then asking for a 2% salary increase isn't necessarily going to cut it because you're more heavily impacted by a 10% with regards to childcare, you know, goods and services versus somebody who's single and doesn't have any dependents. They only really care about maybe 1% or 2% is actually even more beneficial than what they actually need because they only really care about the 1% that relates to, you know, increased food prices. So really think about that. Think about what things are actually going up in prices. How does that actually impact you? If it's gas and you're having to pay a lot more in gas and maybe you have a two hour commute or something like that, then you should probably be asking for a bigger raise increase than say somebody who doesn't necessarily have to commute. So keep that in mind when you're negotiating for that salary. So the second major thing to do to protect yourself from inflation is to think about major purchases that you can either postpone till after periods of inflation or think about things you can buy now to protect yourself from further inflation. So those are kind of two different examples or two different points. Let's take that first example. What are major purchases I can buy later after periods of inflation. A car would be a good example right now. The cars are kind of, especially new cars, have inflated prices right now because the supply of cars is pretty limited. But obviously those elevated prices can't sustain forever. So at some point they have to drop. So if I can postpone getting a car for a year from now, and in a year from now, that's when I believe that these inflated or these elevated prices are gonna start to drop for new cars, then I actually benefit from delaying that purchase. Now, think about this kind of the reverse way. What are things I can buy right now to reduce my exposure to inflated costs down the road? Things that don't necessarily expire do very well in this scenario. So if I can buy a bottle of water or cases of toilet paper is probably a more relatable example to a lot of people. If I can buy a whole bunch of those at cost right now, and I think the cost of those goods are actually going to go up next year, I can store those and I, you know, I basically benefit for the next year or so from having paid cheaper prices now and not having to pay those in inflated prices later. So just kind of be thinking about those types of things. What are things I can buy now to reduce my exposure to inflated costs later? And what are things I can postpone until those inflated costs actually start to drop? Now, the third and final thing that I kind of encourage people to do when it comes to inflation is basically use this as a time to basically reset. Whether it's finally getting your finances in order or finally starting a budget or whatever it may be, or maybe re re reviewing your portfolio, maybe that's something you've been postponing doing, or maybe starting your portfolio, whatever that financial task Task actually ends up being these kind of types of periods where it's like everybody's mind is more on the economy or in you know the Dow Jones or whatever it is suddenly people are paying more attention to their finances only in periods of either extreme inflation or extreme recessions those seem to be the periods that people only really pay attention to their finances which is fine use that use that momentum to actually kind of start those financial goals that you actually have been having there are obviously plenty more ways to basically reduce your exposure to inflation or benefit from inflation at the end of the day those are just the ones i want to cover if you appreciate this video at all please give it a thumbs up and if you have any future requested videos please comment down below and if you're interested in personal finance at all or business related videos basically any type of financial video where you really want to cover it in depth. That's what I try to accomplish on this channel. Please consider subscribing. And as always, I hope to see you in the next one.